This is Inwood. It's 17,000 years ago, and our neighborhood is buried deep beneath the ice. When it melts, falling rocks create caves, and swirling water carves pothole shapes in stone. After the ice is gone, hungry mastodons move in, chomping every green thing in sight. The Lenape people live here for over a thousand years. In the early 1600s, Henry Hudson says hello. He really means goodbye. And down by Wall Street, Dutch traders open up for business. A few decades later, settlers with names like Dykeman and Nagel arrive in Inwood. They are farmers and businessmen. They also own slaves. A cemetery on 212th Street becomes the final resting place for over 30 enslaved people who lived and died for them. In 1776, the British invade. There's a big battle here in Washington Heights. The British win and a lot of people die. Until the war ends, soldiers try to keep warm in huts they dig into the side of Inwood Hill. After the dust clears, the Dykemans return and are greeted by a trashed neighborhood. So they rebuild. Over 200 years later, the house still stands at the corner of 204th Street and Broadway. It's 1818, and a lot of the kids in Inwood can't read or write. There aren't any schools here yet. So Mrs. General Eliza Hamilton and Jacobus Dykeman get together with some friends and create Inwood's first school. They call it the Hamilton Free School. Turns out reading and writing is a good thing. Decades later, it will be a library and then a scholarship fund at Columbia for these kids. Farmers up here have orchards now. They also grow corn, onions, and potatoes, but the roads are really bad. The first church here opens in the 1840s, and in the 1850s, a new public school at Academy Street enrolls its first class. But the roads are so bad. The poor church pastor, sick of living in this backwater, complains that the nearest good stake is miles away. In the 1830s, a city slicker named Sam Thompson comes. He wants to build a mansion with a view, so he buys some land on top of Inwood Hill. His rich buddies think he's nuts. Then a train station opens at Tubby Hook, and now his buddies think he's a genius, and they all build homes here. Inwood Hill is positively bustin' with mansions. The name, though, Tubby Hook. The real estate guys don't like it. So somebody pulls a few strings at City Hall, and in 1863, the name Inwood shows up on a map, like out of the blue. In 1871, Grand Central opens on the east side, and the trains take a different route, bypassing Inwood. Not good for the mansion crowd. So they leave, for the Hamptons or something, and in their place, scary institutions like right out of a Charles Dickens story, they build places up on the hill that resemble jails. Tuberculosis patients, drug addicts, sex workers, not a good situation. But look, New York is closing in. It's getting close now. Feeling the heat, the Dykemans sell their land, hundreds of acres, a nice chunk of change. Investors buy it all. But the roads are still crap, so nothing happens for a while. Finally, streetcars arrive in 1902, and the subway opens a few years later. And then, boom! Apartment buildings sprout like weeds. Archaeologists scramble ahead of developers to rescue evidence of our Lenape revolutionary and agricultural past. The Dykeman farmhouse is saved from demolition. It, it could have been an apartment building. Dozens of silent films get made, and some formidable alliances are forged before the film industry moves west to fame and fortune. Inwood was not going to be Hollywood. Engineers blast through Marble Hill and sculpt Inwood Park. Boat clubs pop up along the waterfront. Paddlers and houseboats, bathing beaches and ferries, the Miramar Pool, the Sea Rock, Bare Ass Beach. People move here from Germany, from Ireland. Jewish refugees from Europe escaping unspeakable atrocities. Kiskeya, thousands of newcomers from the Dominican Republic putting down roots. Musicians, actors, artists, shopkeepers, so many people from so many places people asking librarians for more books in more languages. The Dykeman Oval Sports Stadium puts out the welcome mat to athletes of all creeds and colors. Cricket, boxing, baseball, football, skating. 
Today they play basketball right where Satchel Page pitched. Highways are built, bars open and close, bridges too, public housing, a huge football stadium, sons going off to war, people getting married, having babies, a guy takes beer to his friends fighting in Vietnam, little league parades, green markets, but no more movie theaters, it's the internet, cable TV, and Wi-Fi. It doesn't matter when, people are going to worry about speakeasies, the mob, their jobs, schools, discrimination, politics, drugs, New York going broke, President Ford to NYC, drop dead, white flight, raising rents, rezoning, bad pizza. But we are also grateful for our neighbors, for our families, working together as a community, fighting for justice. Manhattan's most beautiful parks, here, waiting for you. Good pizza. Fewer people leaving and more people staying. A little more tolerance, a hopeful future, and a place to raise your kids. This is Inwood. <laughs>